The poem that I will be analysing in this video is William Blake's The Little Vagabond, which comes from his collection of experience, which was published in 1794. The aim of this video, as with all of my videos, are designed to give students uh, an analysis and summary of the poem uh, if you are studying Blake as part of your A-level qualification. The poem is made up of four stanzas, and a vagabond is someone who is not settled, could be homeless, a wanderer, somebody that doesn't have any fixed abode. And the speaker is that vagabond, uh, who is a young child, uh, who finds the church cold and unwelcoming. Uh, but uh, they also say that the alehouse, uh, also known as a pub, is welcoming and friendly. And this is the central contrast in this poem between the pub and the church. So the poem could be viewed as an appeal to make the church more welcoming, charitable and compassionate. Um, and the speaker, despite their naivety and their innocence, perhaps, and could also be quite a humorous argument at times, uh, says that if the church was more like the pub, then the church and religion more generally would be seen as more successful. Um, and unfortunately, though, in the fallen world of experience, this desire to make the church more like an alehouse is ultimately perhaps very unlikely. So the poem could be seen as a, as a plea for kindness and compassion from a religious and political system which was wealthy, but offered limited and questionable help to those on the lower rungs of the societal ladder, which we might now call the working class. So in this poem, the central juxtaposition is between these two settings and the argument that the child um, engages within. It's worth noting for context that Blake had a lifelong faith. He was a lifelong Christian. He was not an atheist. But that did not prevent him from attacking the hypocrisy and repressive and restrictive and controlling teaching of the church um, and its focus, in Blake's mind at least, on the punitive rather than the compassionate. So we're not talking here about a man, a poet, who had no faith at all. He believed in the loving, compassionate God rather than the punitive and controlling one. So here we have the poem, um, as I said, four stanzas long. Um, and if we go into the first stanza, you can see that the child immediately starts to address the mother, dear mother, dear mother. Um, and also on that first line, we have that adjective cold to establish the church as repressive and controlling. So it could be both literally cold, as in chilly, uh, but it could also be emotionally cold, as in repressive and cruel. That adjective cold is then completely contrasted with the word warm on the second line, um, which also could mean, of course, welcoming. And we've also got there a syndetic list of quite positive adjectives, healthy and pleasant and warm, which really, which really suggests that the alehouse is the place to be rather than the cold and unwelcoming church. The fronted conjunction on that second line, but, suggests that the contrast is being established between these two locations. What would ordinarily be seen as the undesirable location of the pub uh, and the desirable location of the church has clearly been inverted and it's swapped. So the church is actually made to be seen as undesirable and the pub desirable. Um, and obviously this links very nicely to the full title of this collection, which is The Contrary States of the Human Soul. It's almost embodied here with these two different settings. Blake, as a poet, as a romantic poet, uh, made use of very traditional rhyme schemes and rhythms, and this poem is no exception. For example, on the third line of every stanza, there is an internal rhyme, which gives it that musicality. So here, for example, it would be the words tell and well. And we get the sense, perhaps, that the mother has asked the child why he isn't exactly jumping for joy at the prospect of going to church. And perhaps this uh, poem is his answer to that question. So despite the child's youth and experience, perhaps there is some merit in his thinking that perhaps if the church did become more appealing, it would be more successful in the community. As we move on to the second stanza, 
The argument and this contrast between the two settings continues. Um, in this beginning line, but if at the church they would give us some ale, it's almost as if the child is suggesting that if people were allowed to drink beer or other alcohol in the church, then it would be a more positive environment full of joviality and merriment. But of course, that does not happen. We also have the adjective pleasant, uh, which is obviously, again, very uh, cosy, which is reinforced with the word fire there, which again juxtaposes with the coldness which we've been told about in that first stanza. We've also got the very positive word regale, which means to entertain or to amuse or to lavishly supply with food and drink. So again, the alehouse here seems to be the much more wholesome and spiritual experience uh, because it often is good food for the soul, whereas the church remains cruel and cold. We've got the idea of singing, which is with the pronoun we, which suggests that it's a collective sense of enjoyment. Uh, you can imagine many perhaps drunk people in a pub singing songs and being happy and cheery and leery, but that doesn't happen in the church. So there's a sense here again that the songs that are sung in pubs or alehouses are much more enjoyable uh, than the hymns which are sung in church. And again, in the bottom there, in the last line, the child is again reinforcing their argument, which is if, if the church was more like the alehouse, then people would not need to stray from it. Uh, and the church would take more responsibility for looking after the poor, which Blake, of course, is suggesting they aren't doing right now. The pub, it seems, offers um, companionship to people, unlike the punitive form of religion seen in the church. As we move into the third stanza, we have two figures which are mentioned. The first is the parson, which is a vicar or priest. And this reminds me of the Garden of Love, with the priests in black gowns patrolling the rounds, as they do, almost like the moral police, with a degree of surveillance and control. Here, though, because the parson is in good spirits because he's drinking, there's a sense that the parson is much more approachable and perhaps much more caring. Um, and obviously the role of a priest is to get their congregation or their flock, so to speak, closer to God and the divine. And there is a sense that the child is saying that if the parson kind of had a bit of fun now and again and, and had, a bit of a drunk, had a bit of a drink and um, stepped away from the very seriousness and solemnity of religion, that he would actually be more successful in getting his congregation closer to the divine. The anaphora is a common Blake technique, again, used by a number of his speakers in a number of poems, and again adds to that persuasiveness of the child's idea. As well as the parson, the second figure that we have mentioned in this poem is a figure called Dame Lurch. And there are two ways that you could interpret this. The first is that at, at this time, at the end of the 18th century, there was no national curriculum. So dame schools were set up which had varying educational standards. So a dame here could be a teacher or caretaker of a school or orphanage. And as we can see with the line who is always at church, those places often regularly followed quite dogmatically uh, religious teaching. The second interpretation of Dame Lurch is an evil folktale figure who was all too eager to punish children directly. Uh, and that is, of course, associated directly with the punitive church and that lack of forgiveness and compassion. We also in this sense have birds, which again is a uh, reinforcement of the pastoral, the green world. And of course, birds are seen as a motive of freedom and hope. We're told that the children who sit in these schools, these dame schools, are bandy, suggesting they're thin and malnourished or cramped at their desks, so generally uncomfortable, which is very similar to the imagery of the schoolboy. And we're also told that they're fasting, perhaps for religious reasons. And there's also their mention of a birch, which I think uh, is reference to a whip, perhaps, and the idea of punishment. And the idea that the church, of course, excused that punishment uh, for for allowing people to follow religion quite dogmatically. 
And in the last stanza, uh, we again continue with the child's argument. The simile at the top here, and God like a father, is supposed to be quite ironic because the child is not supposed to know that God is called the father in the Bible, suggesting that the teaching of religion to children, perhaps in these dame schools, have been focused on the punitive God rather than a loving one. Linking to God um, in that second line, his children as pleasant and happy as he, the child is suggesting that God would be happier if the congregation was happier, uh, as if they are in a pub. So again, we still have this argument now, this idea that a church needs to reach out to its community in order to have purpose. We live now in a more secular society than I think ever before. And a criticism of that, a reason for that has been, it's because the church has not reached out to the community that surrounds it. Uh, and that's still an argument that we have today about uh, the role of the church in a society. Towards the bottom, we have a quite a farcical and hyperbolic, idealistic image of the devil and God uh, ending their quarrel, uh, because the idea is that when, uh, if God and the devil were allowed to sit together in the pub, they would reconcile very quickly. Um, and of course, this is very idealistic, um, as is often the case with children. They don't sometimes understand the complexities of situations. Um, however, because this, um, of course, is not probably going to happen, it means that there's a degree of hopelessness and futility here, um, that such a life of the church being welcoming like a pub will remain a dream and unobtainable in the fallen world of experience. So there's a degree of hopelessness that nothing that the child says will be able to aspire uh, to this kind of idealism that the church, in other words, is always going to stay cold and the alehouse is always going to stay warm and pleasant. So that is the poem, uh, The Little Vagabond. In summary, then, it's a poem that sets up two very different settings, the church versus the alehouse or pub. And the child is saying that if the church was more like the pub, then church and religion more generally would not be so restrictive and controlling, and the church would therefore be less cruel and be more willing to help those who need help, who are suffering and perhaps in poverty.